Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I am Dr. Tayyaba Ikram, working as a consultant psychiatrist in Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, Faisalabad Medical University. I am going to discuss about the psychosocial aspects of death and dying. A simple definition of death is absolute cessation of vital functions. And we call a good death as a death which is free from avoidable distress and suffering for the patient, family and the caregivers. And if there is needless suffering, dishonoring of the patient or family wishes or values, offending the norms of decency, unfortunately we won't call it as a good death. Dying is somewhat a synonym term. Um, in which there is losing of vital functions, developmental concomitant of living part of birth to death continuum. There are some signs which uh, make a physician decide if a person has died. Um, there could be coma, absence of motor responses, corneal reflexes, caloric responses, gag reflex, um, and there could be cup lack of coughing in response to tracheal suctioning and absence of suckling and rooting reflexes, pupillary responses and dilatation in case of uh, neonates and children. This is a clinical criteria for brain death and um, in case of uh, neonates and children we need to be more careful because sometimes uh, signs can be misleading, so it is important uh, to uh, to see for all of these signs before declaring or deciding a death. As per the clinical criteria of brain death, the interval between two evaluations according to the patient's age shall be in case of two months old, um, from term to two months old, there shall be 48 hours interval and 24 hours if it is 2 months to 1 year, 12 hours in 1 year to 18 years and 18 year and above then turban may be optional and decided as by the physician. Once a, some, uh, some beloved person passes away, there is a normal grief reaction in which the first stage is of shock and denial. Um, the family or the near ones shall be saying that it can't be true, how it can happen or uh, this, this is not a true news. So this is called denial. And denial is a normal defense mechanism of at the psychological level, which protects uh, from severe anxiety. So denial in the first phase is a normal part of grief reaction. The next thing which usually happens is anger or aggression in which people may feel agitated or angry about how and why this has happened. Bargaining is the third phase. Um, you must have heard people saying that if I could go in place of the other person, that shall be better, or if I could do something to save the person, or if situation or circumstances were somewhat different, he or she might not have died. So these are all examples of bargaining, which is again a part of normal grief reaction. Then the next phase comes where the person feels very low and depressed. People become VP um, in this phase. But in the end, it should, re it should be resolving and it should be ending up with acceptance. So again, looking at the normal stages of um, of grief. In the first stage, there shall be shock and denial, followed by anger, bargaining, depression, and then ending up with acceptance. If we want to define grief, then this is a subjective feeling or emotions which are precipitated by the death of a beloved person. Mourning is defined as a process by which grief is resolved. So mourning is something which helps to come to terms with the grief actually. Bereavement is a state of being deprived of someone by death. 
Duration of grief, the bereaved is expected to return to work or school in a few weeks and to establish equilibrium with life in a few months, to be capable of pursuing new relationships within six months to one year. This shall be in the case of a normal grief. This is again the same explanation. Initially, the person shall be feeling shock, in disbelief and denial. People may become socially withdrawn. In the end, a normal grief reaction shall be ending up with acceptance. So, in the case of a normal or uncomplicated grief, there are three phases. The first one with shock, the second one with preoccupation with the deceased and the third one with resolution. In the phase one, there may be emotional somatic symptoms, there may be certain thoughts or motivational changes, which are all listed up here. In the second phase, the person may become angry, aggressive, or very sad. They may develop physical symptoms like um, weakness, lack of their appetite, feeling guilty, having dreams or thoughts of the deceased, becoming anhedonic or introverted. In the third phase, in a normal case, the person may think about the past spent with the, the deceased person with pleasure. There may be more um, happier, pleasurable memories with him or her, regaining interest in their normal lives and forming new relationships. This shall be in the case of a normal grief reaction. But if grief is not normal, it becomes complicated or prolonged grief. Uh, it may be, it shall be then chronic and hypertrophic, along with that it shall be delayed. In chronic grief, the risk of going into chronic or abnormal grief reaction is more. If the person who passed away was a close relationship, if there is lack of social support, if the death was very unexpected, intense bereavement or long term, um, the long term symptoms may be there in case of hypertrophic grief. So hypertrophic is a term which is actually focusing on the symptoms of grief being very exaggerated. Delayed grief reaction is the absent or inhibited grief and prolonged denial. Like in case of normal grief reaction, the person shall come to acceptance. But in case of abnormal grief reaction, there may be state of denial for months and months. So, biologically, it can affect a person in a number of ways. Abnormal grief reaction shall result in decreased lymphocyte proliferation and impaired functioning of the natural killer cells. So, in simple words, it shall be affecting immunity of the affected person. There are some differences which we need to be very clear between the bereavement or abnormal grief reaction versus major depressive disorder. Major depressive disorder is a lack of interest and low mood for at least 15 days or 2 weeks um, which is severe enough to affect a person's life. There are certain other features in the very well defined criteria in the DSM-5 and ICD-10. Whereas the bereavement in bereavement symptoms may meet the syndromal criteria for major depressive episode but survivor rarely has morbid feelings of guilt and worthlessness, suicidal ideas or psychomotor retardation. And the person in bereavement considers self-bereaved as compared to the person who is depressed, who feels himself as weak, defective, and bad, which means that he is having low self-esteem. This worry is often triggered by thoughts of, or reminders of the disease. This is what happens in bereavement. In depression, the dysphoria may be independent of the thoughts of the deceased. Usually, there is a clear-cut relationship with the loss of a loved one in bereavement reaction, like in the first two months. While depression can be there at any time, it could be there before the loss as well. There shall be transient and mind loss of function in bereavement as compared to depression, where there is clinically significant distress or impairment. There may not be any family or personal history of major depression in bereavement as compared to depression itself. So how do we help the persons with abnormal grief? The psychotherapeutic treatment is the first line of treatment. First of all, we shall be empathizing. We shall be empathizing and the bereavement counseling is important. Um, the bereaved person needs to be talked to 
about the very about the deceased they need to be explained what happened um they need to be explained that they are going through a difficult time and they need to be encouraged that they shall be coming out of it what they are going through and what they shall be going through in future needs to be explained to them this will really help them in going through the difficult time reality orientation which means that they need to be explained what happened and they need to be help to come to the acceptance so our sole purpose is bringing the person to acceptance once there is acceptance then they may develop patience with time and they may become uh, better regarding their symptoms moreover our goal is restoring the functionality and we shall not be forgetting to treat any comorbid psychiatric illnesses cbt or cognitive behavioral therapy is again important if they are having any any um any thoughts negative thoughts which are affecting their functions along with the grief reaction we need to work on the thoughts which in turn will help with their behavior so in general um, a person with abnormal grief reaction may not need to be referred to a psychiatrist in the first place they may need may not need a sedative or antidepressant in the first place earlier and they can be helped with group counseling or they can be helped at the level of a general physician but if the symptoms are severe and resistant they may need help of a psychiatrist and they may need pharmacological treatment we can take help from antidepressants and anxiolytics um which can help them um with the severity of symptoms and distress and again treatment of any comorbid psychiatric illness is very important because in the times of stress the psychiatric illnesses may become um may relapse or um may become severe social support is 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 very very important the family persons and um whatever social support they have needs to be enhanced participation in rituals regarding to the person who has died it helps in acceptance they need to be encouraged to take part in uh, like uh, funeral gatherings and uh, in in prayers with for the deceased and um in charity related to the deceased whatever rituals the family is following if the uh, person going through abnormal grief reaction is encouraged to take part in those rituals it helps to come to terms with the death so in the end uh, um i shall be ending up with a quote that dying and the individual's awareness of it imbues humans with values passions and wishes and the impetus to make the most of time so um with this quote i shall be um ending my presentation and i should i'm happy to answer any questions of yours if there you can drop the questions in the comment box and i can uh try to respond to them um thank you very much